Hey folks, Dave the Not So Evil, Evil Viking 13, here today with a special video actually produced by Joel. He had some great thoughts on Ghost Recon Wildlands, and as I've been meaning to do a video on Ghost Recon Wildlands myself, I wanted to share it with you guys today. Additionally, stay tuned after his video for a few more wrap up thoughts from me. Hey guys, so this video is pretty much all about Ghost Recon Wildlands and why I love it so much and why I think you could possibly like it too. Um, and here are my reasons why. When this game first came out, I don't think it puts you in the best area to really begin with. That just kind of felt very constricting and it just, it wasn't a good representation of, I think of what the game can do. Um, th there's some things that have rough edges mechanics and driving and stuff like that but I want to go into each little element in detail honestly and show you why I think it is an extraordinary game there's a lot of replayability there's a lot of um, I think value in the game a lot of missions escort has been destroyed Helos destroyed escort car destroyed And a lot of polish too that I think it's hard to notice unless you play for a little bit longer and you kind of get out of that initial first experience. But because of the views that came out when it came out, it got bashed so hard that I think people don't give it a chance. Where I think if you're someone who very much likes a game like Arma, this is going to be the detention camp. We got civilians yep, close to. Your position. We got the, that squad right there. Let's try to take that squad out quick and get in a better position. Be copy. Nice, Justin. Right. Team 1, we have a lot of marked contacts to our right. We're gonna... But if you enjoy games like Ghost Recon on Wildlands, you might not enjoy games like Arma. That's where I kind of fit in the game. Um, that's my preference. So I think if you're someone like that, I think you're going to really enjoy this, and I think I might possibly convince you to pick it up again. We should have a PSYOP unit down here, don't you think? Or MISO, or whatever they're called now. Shit, there might be one here already for all we know. Bowman plays her cards close to the chest. When I first started this game, I actually really didn't like the gameplay at all. Um, I played the beta and I just found it very... I don't know, it was... It just didn't feel right. But, after I started playing it for a while, I really, really enjoyed it. I think something just clicked and it just felt awesome. The gameplay just allows you to do anything you want. Whatever mission it may be, you're allowed to kind of tackle it any way you want. And from the first area that the game drops you in, kind of seems like all the missions are missions are very similar. But they're actually not. Uh, the more you start exploring, the missions actually do vary a lot. Now, to be clear, there's these little side missions that you can unlock with green icons that allow you to kind of work with the civilians and people and the citizens in the area. And they'll help you. You can, um, you know, they'll, they'll help you with various things like mortar drops or dropping off cars or vehicles for you, or just backing you up in a mission. I called the rebels for some indirect fire. Got it, amigo. Shut out. Those missions can be very uh, repetitive, and honestly, I don't do too many of those. Every once in a while, I do some when I need to, you know, upgrade something. But those, I would say, are very repetitive. So that's something I should look out for. But when it comes to the actual missions, they do vary quite a lot. There are missions where you need to like take photos of people, and if you get seen at all, game over, you're done. Which is honestly, I think, is actually some of my favorite ones because you really have to be careful. Um, there's m missions where you have to steal a car, get out of a certain area, and everything is just, you know, hell is breaking loose. There's also missions where you're just tasked to take out three or four guys in a certain area without anybody seeing. Some where you're supposed to take, you know, some drug lord out, but bring him back to your safe house. And those can be really fun because some of the really cool mechanics is when you capture a bad guy, 
you can actually hold them up, you know, by gunpoint, and they'll start talking, or maybe a cutscene start, or not a cutscene, but their dialogue might start. But what's cool, actually, is it is a very unique game mechanic that I've not seen in many games, at least that I can remember, is that you're able to actually pause that. You can cancel it, drop them, pull out a pistol, and shoot other people, or hold them and shoot a pistol. But you can kind of let go from them for a minute, kill other people, <laughs> and then come back and continue where you are. Both your legs. You read me? Now shut up and move. Vehicles in this game have a really bad rap, I think, and honestly, rightfully so. It's like hunting big game going after El Muro. They're really, really not good, but honestly, after you use them for a little bit, they're not terrible. And after thinking for a while, there's not really that many huge open world games that have good driving. Like there's GTA 5, you know, that like GTA 4, they have good driving. But when it comes to an all out like military shooter, I can't really think of that many games that have excellent driving. Um, because when you're in open world, you, have, you can drive over rocks and anywhere you want. So Because I was even thinking with GTA 5, some of the mountains, they're all very plain. They're not like super detailed and like... There's not, the, 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 the gravel and stuff you're driving over, the, the terrain is really bumpy in Wildlands as opposed to GTA 5 where it's kind of more smooth. There's some areas that have that, but most of the areas it's kind of meant to be driven over. But I can't really think of any other game right now that comes to mind that has that kind of detailed terrain that you can drive a vehicle on. Because so, I'm almost thinking, if you, if you think about Witcher 3, the, the, the environment is extremely detailed, like all the ridges and rocks and stuff like that. If you had a car in there, it would be kind of very hard to drive because there's so many trees and things like that. So I, I don't think it should have as bad a rap as it should um, for just for being the game it is. Um, some of the controls are just kind of wonky, like they just don't really make a lot of sense, like the helicopters. But you kind of like, if you play it for a while, you kind of realize, oh, there's you can actually control it fairly well. Like you just have to do weird things where you have to hold the, the trigger down, push forward to gain speed, and then you just keep holding gas. And gas is essentially forward as opposed to a lot of games where it's like accelerating up and, and you just tilt the controller forward to move forward. It does this weird thing where you have to hold forward, gain speed, and then you can let go of the left stick and you just kind of keep going forward even though you're not leaning forward. It's, it's interesting and it's, it's not the best, but it's still doable and it's a lot of fun and I don't, I, I don't think those elements detract that much from the rest of the gameplay. Let's talk about weapons for a second. Weapons in this game are honestly I think incredible. Hostile down. There's just so many, there's so many varieties of weapons, and honestly, each weapon kind of feels quite different, and they're very fun to collect and to try out the new, you know, just the silencers on them. And then also, one of the best things to do is to take the silencer off. Once you kind of get caught by enemies, take the silencer off, go loud, have a lot of fun. And it just sounds awesome. The gun sounds are really good in this game. They're really loud. And the echo too when you're in a mountainous area or if you're inside, especially breaching a house, is super cool. It just sounds pretty badass. Being able to mod your weapons too, just to like slowly collect different, you know, mags or um, you know, scopes or red dots or things like that is a blast. I love being able to just try different, you know, styles and then go through each mission. I enjoy playing the game, kind of role playing, just pretending I'm in this kind of area. I'm gonna, I'm this badass dude, <laughs> and I'm tracking down all these horrible drug lords, and we're gonna take them all out and. Huh. Take them all out and just kind of do what, just take them all out and do what you got to do, I guess.
The drone is really cool in this game, but the one negative side on it is when you start the game, the drone battery, rem like the distance you're able to fly it is extremely limited. And I think it's, again, it's one of those things where I think Ubisoft was almost wanting you to have more things to upgrade to just ex pad the game's life out a little bit more than they should have, where I don't think it was a necessary need. Because once you level it up a little bit, it actually is just, just fine. And it's a really cool little asset to use, and I love using it. But at the start, it just feels like, okay, I can barely go 10 feet and the battery dies. And that's one thing where if you don't upgrade it soon, you're going to have a bad experience again and again and again. But it's one of those things where as soon as you upgrade just a little bit and get out of the main area and the main kind of ranks and upgrades and stuff you have, you start with, the game really does open up and allow you a lot more options, especially when you start getting like the, your first really good scope. That makes a huge difference to just how the game feels. I'd like to talk about the graphics for just a few minutes. This game is honestly gorgeous. There are an incredible amount of environments in this game. And again, I have to stress, the starting area if you just bought this game, try to finish that earlier or just go somewhere else because the game really does open up because it feels like you're in the jungle the whole time because the first couple areas are just very similar. Um, but once you get out of that area, there's like swampy jungles. There's deserts. There's huge lakes. There's snowy peak mountains. There's just very Arizona-like areas. There's areas that just kind of feel like you're in the TV show Breaking Bad. Um, there's so many areas that it's just fun to explore and, and honestly, I'm quite surprised with the amount of detail they added into the game for various missions where you might find a giant shipwreck and you're taking people out on that. Or you're, you know, again, like in the swampy jungle, and there's these old little shacks and just cool old bridges and trails that kind of wind around. There's so many variants to this game that kind of blew me away that I expected it to not be like that, but I was really surprised that once you leave the initial area and start driving around, Wow, there's a lot of stuff to do in this game, and the areas look all very different. The sounds, too. Again, one of my favorite things to do in the game is, again, you don't have to play like this, but this is just something I enjoy, is to kind of go with all the camouflage. So if you're in the jungle area, I went all green and camouflaged, and all the weapons are green, and I just kind of pretended I was in freaking Predator or something. And it just, I had a lot of fun just kind of playing that way. And then when I was in the desert, I would go all, you know, tan colors and, and vice versa. When I've been in the snow area, I kind of went, you know, snow uh, to snow camo. And it just reminded me of like being in, uh, uh, what's that, a Christopher Nolan movie. Um, dang, I can't think of it. Inception, there we go. It kind of felt like I was in the, in the movie Inception, that the winter scene, if you've seen the movie. Let's talk about um, animations and kind of glitches and stuff. So, good side. There's a lot of really incredible animations with the game with when you handle bad guys. You can capture them, and you can kind of like hold the pistol up to them and interrogate them, um, or just, you know, <laughs> break their necks, things like that. Those animations are pretty awesome. Uh, but some of the, like, the wonky things you'll see in the game, and again, it's one of those things where it's, I, again, I have not really seen a game that's a huge open world that allows you to kind of tackle anything in any way. So when you climb up stuff, sometimes you'll kind of glitch and climb up things weird. Or when you drop off a cliff, you'll land and kind of do a tumble or it'll do like a weird tumble or things like that. It just won't connect because it's like, again, you're allowed to go anywhere. Again, you're going to run into that kind of stuff, but I'm just giving you this information because I think the game is still good enough that you can have a really fun time even though some of those things could happen. So I have uh, I play all I play all this on the PS4 Pro, and I have Spotify attached. So I've made two playlists. One is exploring music.
and one is battle music. Fire, fire, fire. And I love the movie um, Sicario, so I have a lot of music from that. And what's really fun is just putting that on, dropping the music down from the end game from uh, actual Wildlands, and playing your own music. Just kind of put the you know volume down to like one fourth of the volume. Take it easy. We're the good guys. They're gonna make you back up. But it's so incredibly badass going with just a silenced pistol. I'm decked out all in black, like uh, Benicio del Toro. Tango's near the building. And then also arranging the various targets you can do with your other AI uh, opponent or opponents players um, that kind of like Starting work with you, your team. You can assign them targets, and taking them taking people out very quietly is extremely satisfying in this game. Kill confirmed. It seems like it's an easy game, but if you ramp the difficulty up just a little bit and you go into the HUD and you make sure you can't see the red clouds, which basically kind of gives you a idea of where enemies are. It's one thing to, to, to spot enemies on the map, like with your binoculars or things, but don't make sure to turn off the, the enemy clouds because that makes you play a lot slower and it's much, much harder because certain compounds can be really huge and if you're not careful, you'll get screwed super fast in the game. Basically to wrap all of this up is just to say that I really, really enjoy the game and I think it's actually really polished. There's some glitches, there's some really stupid things that will happen in the game. Um, but I think overall, if you're someone who just wants to have an experience that you can jump in, jump out really quickly, or to be able to have just kind of an immersive couple hours while you're playing, play some music on Spotify, whatever your favorite music is, I, I think this game is for you. So if you're not into more hardcore sim type of games, this game could be for you. And I think, again, being careful to watch reviews is look for their personality. That's what I've kind of been telling you to look for now, is when a reviewer is talking about a game, their personality, if that kind of lines up with my personality, I tend to really enjoy the game a lot more. I think it can probably help you find games that you might not ever play or even think about just because maybe you are looking at the score or you're looking for, you know, they're saying, oh, it's got glitches or bugs or things like that. Well, there's always another chopper out there somewhere, right? And I've just found that it almost score doesn't matter as much to me anymore now. It is more of lining up that personality and going, ah, oh, that's 100% what I'm looking for. I don't want to have to, you know, mess around with this or have to tweak settings or do this. I just want to hit a button and then jump in and play for a little bit. Or, you know what, I really want a hardcore sim. What where can I get that, you know, experience? So, um, I don't know. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope this maybe changed your mind a little bit about the game and maybe uh, worth trying out. Maybe it's on sale at least. So, thanks for watching and um, I don't know. Go play the game. See you guys. Honestly, guys, I think Joel covered most of the points that I wanted to cover. I'm not quite as enthusiastic about the game as he is, but I'd say I'm about 80% there. I agree that for the most part, this game definitely got a bad rap, and especially after a patch or two after launch, which seems to be the norm these days. It's a pretty solid game and quite a lot of fun. A few things that he didn't cover that I want to include how actually PC focused this game was for the PC version, which is of course the version that I'm mostly playing. The developers worked with NVIDIA for additional NVIDIA features to go into the game, including full NVIDIA Ansel support. For those of you not aware, NVIDIA Ansel is NVIDIA's really fantastic cinematic screenshot option where you can pause the game, go into a free camera, and take massive like 20k renders of the game if you want to with different effects and camera options along the way. It's a must have for those of you who enjoy taking screenshots of all of the pretty graphics. And most certainly Wildlands on PC does have some very pretty graphics. Some of the PC specific features include DirectX 11 enhanced volumetric lighting. 
you also get horizon-based ambient occlusion, which really sells interior environments with well-connected dark recesses inside of buildings and where objects connect. NVIDIA turf effects are also included, where the long grass in the game actually is thicker, flows better, and even shadows other blades of grass around it, an extra layer of detail that really helps add depth to just grassy environments. Additionally on PC, if you just crank the traditional graphic options as high as they can go, things like terrain detail make this game look amazing, where the ground with all the rocky bits and muddy details is completely subdivided. Just in the texture detailing on the terrain, it looks fantastic. As someone who really appreciates the extra mile when it comes to environment art and video game graphics, I really appreciated that extra detail here on PC. Like Joel already covered, the missions themselves are actually quite fun, in my opinion. If you stick to the main missions in the game, they are quite varied and include a wild amount, no pun intended, of voiceover and extra lore to go along with them. Where you can get bogged down, like so many open world games, is trying to do all of the side missions. I would suggest, unless you guys are working towards a certain unlock, just skip over those side missions after you do the first couple. That will take out the large majority of the repetition in the game. Additionally, for me, co-op is very important, and although this game was not quite the Arma Light co-op experience that I was hoping for, the co-op does work quite well, and Joel and I have had a blast playing just two-player co-op together. With just two players, the difficulty set high, with a lot of the helpers turned off like the enemy area clouds, the game does get a lot harder in a good way, where you have to go silent for a lot of the attacks, and when things go loud, you can't just Rambo in. You've got to use cover, fall back when necessary, and actually play things tactically. I'm also a sucker for good customization, and this game has that in droves. I've never seen a game with so much branded and non-branded tactical military gear. And, while some of it may be cliché, you have to admit that it's a lot of fun playing military dress-up. This is G.I. Joe for adults, and it's done quite well. Even though after launch the game has gone a little bit crazy with the cosmetic DLC that you can buy with 70s and uh, Assassin's Creed themed packs for like $10 a piece, the base game has so much customization that you don't need any of that to go along with it. There's plenty there in the base game, and it's a very impressive amount of customization, and it's quite easy to do and quite detailed. Honestly guys, I really only have three main negatives for this game, one of which is tonal issues over the course of the main campaign. The main story can get quite dark. As other reviewers mentioned when the game first launched, the game has a hard time deciding if it's supposed to be a serious drama like Sicario, or a wild romp kind of like a lot of multiplayer shooters these days. A lot of the trailers had YouTubers exclaiming over crazy explosions and car chases and whoa, military action. Then the story is talking about uh, people being murdered and put into vats of acid and entire villages held hostage and burned down for the drug cartels and it gets very, very dark. Some of the cliches spouted by your teammates don't really help. And I get they're going for the macho tier one operator look, but Honestly, a lot of the dialogue is so cliche, I can't help but wonder, like, are they making fun of the military operator cliches, or are they trying to be badass with them? It kind of walks the line back and forth where it's really hard to tell sometimes. Some of the dialogue from your ghost can be quite good and actually fit the action around them. Other dialogue is quite cringy and is actually more distracting than anything. It just has a hard time figuring out what tone it's going for. Ooh, Yo, crap. I got a weapons case here. Shit balls. That has to be the dumbest line in the game. Shit balls. <laughs> no? Uh, me, I guess it's me and my brother. We say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> my second problem with the game is the ballistics. The developers made some weird choices when it came to the ballistics in this game, and as someone who personally is much more into realistic shooters with a more sim feel to them, like Arma and Rising Storm 2 for example, I found the ballistics in Wildlands to be very very distracting and at long range not very fun. Some guys over on Reddit actually did the math and figured out that the ballistics, the muzzle velocity in particular of the weapons in Ghost Recon Wildlands, is one third of the real life speed. 
That means that the bullets in this game only travel at about one third of what they would actually travel in real life. And again, as someone who enjoys more sim-like games like Arma and Rising Storm 2, and as someone who has quite a lot of hobbyist firearm experience, I enjoy target shooting and the like, I know from experience how, for example, 762 actually flies through the air. So when I play Wildlands with its exaggerated bullet drop, it's very, very noticeable. Let's compare a few examples. Okay, low to the right, like right on the corner. The muzzle velocity is just unusually low in Ghost Recon Wildlands, and having complaints about the ballistics in a Ghost Recon game is kind of a weird place to be. Now again, it's not a bad system, it's just personally one that is not in line with my style. The combat in Ghost Recon Wildlands is a lot of fun, it's just hard for me to let go of that more realistic style ballistics. Recon is in the air! And finally, my last negative for the game has to be just the overall amount of bugginess. I think I've actually had a bit of bad luck when it comes to the bugs in this game with falling through terrain and getting random 50% graphics card usage FPS drops, but I think everyone who's played the game can agree it has just a slight amount of wonk above most other open world games. Any open world game that's going to be unscripted is going to have some level of just weirdness and glitchiness to it, but I really feel like Wildlands, even months after launch, is just a bit rough around the edges. Beyond those three main complaints though, I really can't argue against anything that Joel said, even though I'm not bringing up Spotify playlists when I'm playing and wearing a tactical vest on my couch, which I swear he's doing that at this point. I still enjoy the game, it is a lot of fun, and kind of like my second look at Mafia 3, I do feel like this game has gotten a bad rap that it doesn't completely deserve. I hope you guys will consider, after Joel's video and my thoughts, giving it a second chance. For now though guys, hope you've enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.